Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are covering a 2022 MLB mock draft. Now, I know a lot of people really liked it last year, so we wanted to continue this series once again. We're going to present some of the top prospects in the class and obviously go through a full first round mock draft. If you are new to our channel, hit that subscribe button if you do enjoy MLB content. Now, looking at the first overall pick, we have the Baltimore Orioles, and Brooks Lee seems like the pick to me. Um, when you look at how advanced of a hitter Brooks Lee is, I think it makes a lot of sense for this Baltimore Orioles organization, which is definitely trending in the right direction. Um, he has all the tools currently to stay at shortstop. He's also 21 years old, playing at Cal Poly. I think you know he offers a lot of upside as a hitter, a true guy, a, a guy that you can really build around for the future. So you look at the Baltimore Orioles, I think this is an ideal landing spot for Brooks Lee. Now moving on to the second pick, we have the Diamondbacks. Drew Jones, uh, this guy offers uh, great athleticism, a guy that can hit for power, hit for contact, and, and he's a phenomenal athlete. That, on top of it, that's what you're looking for is a guy with really good athleticism. He obviously has MLB blood as well. Uh, his dad, Andrew Jones, played in the league for a long time. Very, very good player in his career. And then Drew Jones is following in his father's footsteps. I think there's a lot to like about him as a defender uh, with how much ground he can cover in that outfield. Uh, to me, he projects as a starting center fielder in the MLB. I think he can stick there with how great defensively he is. Drew Jones is one of those really, really exciting prospects that I think would be a nice franchise cornerstone for the Arizona Diamondbacks. So to me, I think that makes a lot of sense from their perspective. I think, you know, he kind of fits the timeline. He fits exactly what they're looking for um, from an organizational standpoint. Drew Jones would be a home run pick here at number two. Number three, I have Elijah Green from IMG Academy. Now, if you ask me who has the most raw power in the entire class, uh, Elijah Green's the guy that comes to mind. So much raw power to tap into. Very well could be a 40 home run guy in his career. Um, but the one problem he does have, a lot of, a lot of big swings and misses. I, I think a little bit of a hole in his swing in, in that sense. However, that's not something that's, you know, that he's not able to overcome. I, I think it's very possible he's able to correct that, still hit for a ton of power, considering he is probably the best power bat in this entire class. Um, you know, once again, this is a guy that defensively can stick in center field. I think for the, the Texas Rangers, you know, a guy that hits for a lot of power, can play really good defense at that next level. Um, Elijah Green from IMG Academy, to me, makes a lot of sense. Now with the fourth pick, we have Jackson Holiday, the son of Matt Holiday um, from Stillwater, Oklahoma. And to me, uh, overall, he has a lot of great tools to work with. Uh, definitely moldable in terms of being able to hit. Um, definitely has some power like his father had as well. But I think, you know, the most important thing is he's going to be a very well-rounded player because he offers so many different tools. Uh, once again, here you have the MLB uh, you got the father pipeline uh, of him playing in the league and, you know, really having the, the ins and the outs of what it takes to be a true professional at this level. So I think the Pittsburgh Pirates here getting a guy like Jackson Holiday, who can play shortstop very well, should be able to stick at shortstop with his glove. Um, I look at this as a really, really good selection for this organization. Uh, I love this year for the Pirates. Uh, now we have the Washington Nationals here at number five. And I think uh, you know, Kevin uh, Pareda is going to be one of those guys from Virginia Tech that you look at and say that he's going to be, you know, one of those high risers in the draft. Uh, I know he continues to climb people's boards. Um, he has been uh, doing a lot in terms of, you know, hitting for average in the minors uh, and continues to be one of those really, really good offensive weapons for a, a team like Georgia Tech. Uh, defensively, he's not elite by any stretch of the imagination. However, he's got a plus bat in a lot of different regards, can hit for the power. Uh, also, you know, he's going to hit for a lot of contact. So looking at a Pareda as a really, really good catching option for the, this Nationals team that, you know, I'm looking down the line and I see them potentially, you know, needing that catching spot filled. Uh, and also, I mean, worst case scenario, you, you do kick him to first if you don't like him at that catcher spot. He's got such an advanced bat at this stage in his career. I think it makes a lot of sense for the, the Washington Nationals here. Number six, I have the Miami Marlins. And when you look at this organization from top to bottom, uh, there's a lot of pitching within this, within this team here. Um, they had strategized that. Uh, they got a lot of great pitching prospects. And the rotation and bullpen are going to be good for years to come. Now, where they're lacking is some infielders, guys that can hit consistently, 
and, and guys that can produce some power in the minors, they really just don't have a ton of that. Um, and I look at Jace Jung as a really good opportunity for them to go ahead and get the big power guy. Now, Jace Jung isn't one of those typical power hitters where you're, you're going to see a ton of power and a ton of strikeouts. He does a great job limiting those strikeouts. Um, you know, he's not an elite tier in terms of, you know, defensive prowess. He doesn't really have that. What he is, is a, a really, really good, powerful hitter, guy that doesn't strike out a ton, uh, smart at the plate. And with the Miami Marlins, it, I'm not so concerned as much about the defensive side of things, um, but he's going to have to stick at second base, in my opinion. So keep that in mind. You look at a guy like Jace Jung, uh, one of those big power bats that the Marlins would need. They need to take a, they definitely need to take a bat in this draft, in my opinion. And I think they go ahead and select one here. If you look at last year when they got uh, Khalil Watson, uh, they were willing to take a risk on a guy that they weren't sure if he was going to sign and it paid off for him. I think Jay Strunks would be a nice follow-up pick uh, from what they did last year. Number seven, Termar, or Termar Johnson uh, from Mays High School in Georgia. And if you look at this guy, um, he could be the best hitter in this entire class when you holistically are speaking about it. Uh, really smooth swing, um, a guy that knows how to hit with two strikes. Um, long term, you look at the power, it's definitely going to be there. Um, he, obviously, he's got to build up some more muscle. He's a high school kid, and the power is going to come, but his swing is so incredibly smooth uh, and reliable and repeatable. I, I think you look at the Chicago Cubs as you know, taking a chance on this high school prospect that uh, definitely could help out in the long term future. Obviously, they have the long term vision in mind. They're not afraid to take a high school kid and, and really get him through the pipeline. So, very well could project to be the, the best hitter in this entire class. Now at number eight, we have the Minnesota Twins. And when I look at where they stand from an organizational standpoint, uh, they definitely could use an arm. You know, Brock Porter from Orchard Lake, St. Mary's in Michigan could fit the bill, in my opinion. Uh, features a mid-90s fastball, really good command on all four of his pitchers, pitches that he has to offer. And I, I think when you look at that as a whole, uh, the Minnesota Twins will not be afraid to select uh, a high school player, especially a, a high school prep arm, considering that they did take Chase Petty last year. Uh, and then obviously they ended up moving him in that Sunday gray deal. But Brock Porter very well could project to be a nice middle of the rotation guy for the Minnesota Twins. And I see that being a very, very possible outcome here uh, for this team that's got a lot of hitting within the organization. Um, they're even having troubles with, you know, what they currently have on roster and trying to figure out how it's all going to fit in. Uh, what they do need is to develop more arms and Brock Porter definitely could be that for this team. Number nine, Gavin Cross. And I look at Gavin Cross as a guy that um, can be an interesting bat for the Kansas City Royals. Uh, you're taking an experienced guy at Virginia Tech. He was very, very consistent, held a high OPS throughout his college career. He's got a nice combination of the speed and some of the power. So using some of those tools um, and, and evaluating them from that standpoint, I think the Kansas City Royals looking to add to the outfield depth of that organization. I'd like him here out of Virginia Tech. I, I think the Kansas City Royals uh, should definitely look at investing more uh, in that outfield. And honestly, it, it's not going to take Gavin Cross and, and until he is ready for the major leagues. Jacob Berry is an interesting name. When you look at Jacob Berry, um, the transfer from Arizona to LSU, uh, he hits to all fields. And, you know, but the one thing that's kind of concerning about Jacob Berry is uh, he's not set at a specific position. They got him playing in the corner infield. They have him playing in the outfield. So we're not exactly sure where that's going to, you know, pay off for him. I, I'm, I'm not sure where he projects as a fielder uh, at that next level. However, I think that is very noteworthy. That, you know, not an elite tier def uh, defender. However, he is able to play multiple positions and they really gave him that optionality here at LSU. And, you know, honestly, I, th this transfer is going to pay off for him and continues to pay dividends for Jacob Berry. At 11, we got Dylan Lesko from Buford High School. New York Mets are getting a prep arm here in Dylan Lesko. Now, when you look at what he is as a prospect, um, you know, aside from the Tommy John, you looked at his fastball, very, very respectable, had a really nice curveball, high spin rate on that curveball. So Dylan Lesko could be one of those prospects that, uh, you know, the Mets are seeking out. They're, they're always looking for arms in this organization. And, you know, they have another pick to supplement that. Um, they're going to go ahead and take the chance on the guy that just had Tommy John, 
However, uh, when he comes back, I think he's, you know, very well could be the best pitcher uh, in this entire draft. However, health is a major concern, obviously. Uh, the Tigers here, I think they're looking to add a bat. Cam Collier is the perfect guy to fill that. Um, he, he was phenomenal when you look at the junior college level guy that definitely was able to hit for a little bit of pop hit for average. And I think the Tigers are looking, you know, to continue to add bats. This is an organization that has you know, quite a bit of pitching and they're going to continue to look to add, uh, you know, to that, that hot corner over there at third cam Collier is an ideal fit for the Tigers at number 13, uh, Daniel Suzak from Arizona. This is a guy that uh, has been very, very impressive. Uh, in his time at Arizona, I look at the Angels as an organization that very well could be looking to add more, um, you know, to that catching position, a, a guy that can hit consistently and also play pretty good defense. Uh, that's what Daniel Suzak has to offer here. I like this for the Angels from the standpoint of they need a little more depth within this organization at that catching spot. Number 14, we have the New York Mets, and we're going to go ahead and get an established college bat in Jordan Beck. This is a guy that is a very, very good hitter. Uh, consistent hitter for the Bulls. And I think when you look at the New York Mets uh, from an organizational standpoint, I very well could see them taking a guy like Jordan Beck. Uh, you know, obviously they went with the, the prep arm earlier. They come back and take an established college bat in Jordan Beck. To me, that makes a lot of sense for this team. Uh, considering moving forward, they're, they're going to need to add a couple more bats. We'll kind of have to see how the payroll thing plays out and maybe guys get moved in that outfield. Number 15, uh, Connor uh, Prelip from Alabama, uh, a true established left-handed pitcher. And the, the San Diego Padres are going to be looking to add more left-handed arms within the organization. I think that's somewhere that they're kind of prioritizing in this draft. Uh, you know, Prelip is going to be one of those guys that you can go ahead and plug into a rotation in a couple of years. It's not going to take long for him to develop in the minors, but uh, very, very good, good pitcher for Alabama, consistent. And, you know, you could very well see him sliding up into this Padres organization. The Guardians, Zach Neto from Campbell College. You're not going to see that name a lot. Uh, Zach Neto is one of those players that you can fit into the Guardians. I, I think that with where this organization stands, they definitely need some more shortstop depth within it. And a guy like Neto is the perfect plug and play guy. Um, it's going to take him a couple of years, can hit to all fields. But I think Zach Neto, uh, projects nicely as a shortstop for the Cleveland Guardians. At number 17, we have Justin Crawford, Bishop Gorman High School. Son of Carl Crawford, obviously we, we know what he had to bring to the table. Um, so the, the, physical, the physical tools are all there. Carl Crawford, if you remember in his prime, was phenomenal for the Tampa Bay Rays, stole a lot of bases in his career. Justin Crawford very well could do very much the same, uh, really good speed, uh, very good athlete as a whole can cover a lot of ground in that outfield. So Justin Crawford here to the Phillies is something that's kind of an interesting uh, take, in my opinion. I, I just think adding another outfield to this organization uh, makes too much sense. At number 18, we have the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, Chase Day Lauder from James Madison, an established college hitter, and the Cincinnati Reds are a team that definitely needs to add to that outfield, a guy that can hit consistently. He's hit consistently at, at the collegiate level. I think this Reds team... Uh, they definitely need a lot. You know, they're going through a full-scale rebuild at the current moment, but uh, Chase DeLauder is one of those guys that's going to slot in nicely, potentially into a corner outfield spot and, and be a consistent hitter at that next level. That's why I opted to go with him to the Reds. At number 19, we have Sterling Thompson. Uh, offers an interesting upside. I think when you are the Oakland A's, you want to take some chances. Uh, Sterling, Sterling Thompson uh, offers a potentially a high ceiling uh, once again, a guy that can cover some ground in the outfield uh, can provide a little bit of pop. I think, you know, as he continues to get stronger, um, this is going to be one of those guys that you're looking on as, uh, you know, he projects to be a very nice major league hitter. The Oakland A's are definitely looking to add more into that outfield within the organization. So I like him here at 19, 20, uh, Gabriel Hughes, right-hander out of Gonzaga going to the Braves. The Atlanta Braves organization does a really nice job. Uh, you know, grooming pitchers. I think adding a guy like Gabriel Hughes would be absolutely huge for this team. They're going to continue to have these pitchers coming through the pipeline as we have contract situations coming up over the next couple of seasons. Uh, they want to make sure that they have a stable of arms in that rotation, ready to go. Gabriel Hughes would be a nice addition, um, you know, for this team, good with his command. 
And I think this is kind of the, the very much the Braves pick. Uh, they always are, are pretty consistent, uh, especially within this recent regime of having uh, consistent arms within the team. Now I look at the Mariners. I think they're looking for a left-handed pitcher. Uh, Brandon Barrera is going to be one of those guys from American Heritage High School. Uh, the left-hander offers a variety of pitches. And I think when you look at the Seattle Mariners uh, within the organization, you have to consider that they are looking pitching, pitching, pitching um, as well. They, they have a couple of nice pitchers come through the pipeline right now. However, I think adding another left-handed pitcher uh, to this already pretty talented farm system is definitely worth worth your time for sure. So Barrera here goes to the Mariners. We're going to follow it up with another prep arm and Robbie Snelling from McQueen High School. Uh, you know, the St. Louis Cardinals have been so consistent and, and so good for so long. Uh, they're an impressive organization to watch. But looking at what they've done, uh, collectively speaking, I, I think they need to add another left-handed arm. This is kind of the same thing as the Seattle Mariners. Robbie Snelling is a guy that offers some potentially high upside here um, from McQueen High School. I like this from for the Cardinals organization, just considering that uh, he could be a projectable, like a, a third or a four starter within this rotation next couple of seasons. So uh, I think Robbie Snelling makes a lot of sense here. Um, you know, I look at the Toronto Blue Jays as a team that is going to continue to add pitching. They have a really, really nice lineup the, the way it is. Uh, Cooper Herjerpe from uh, Oregon State is going to be the pick here. Uh, kind of offers an interesting arm slot when he is delivering the ball. Uh, very, very consistent at Oregon State, consistently pitching long outings. And I think when you look at the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, this is an organization that you have to consider as um, they will be pitching heavy. They, they got to kind of counterbalance this. They've done a nice job adding pitching as well. Jose Brios was obviously the latest rendition of that. Um, still, you know, trying to work through some things in Toronto. However, this is a staff that projects nicely at that, you know, as time goes on. Red Sox, Landon Sims. Landon Sims was, has been a big part of this Mississippi State program. And I look at the Boston Red Sox and they're going to continue to add pitching. Um, obviously, this is a very, very tough and competitive AL East with some young teams like the Tampa Bay Rays, like Toronto. And then you obviously have the juggernauts and the Yankees right now. Uh, Landon Sims can help out this rotation. It's not going to take him a long time to make it through the system. He's an advanced college pitcher. And I look for the Boston Red, so Red Sox to go ahead and pull off something like this. Landon Sims can locate. He's got some nasty stuff. See him going here 24 to the Red Sox. Now, speaking of their, their rivals here, we got Dylan Beavers from California. Uh, this Yankees organization um, obviously have been trading some prospects. And I think they need to replenish their outfield. Uh, Dylan Beavers is one of those guys from California. Once again, he's an established college hitter. You know what you're going to be getting out of him at that next level. Um, and it's not going to take a long time for him to work his way through the minor league system. I just think adding an outfield bat for sure is something that the Yankees could be prioritizing. I think he's you know more projecting as a corner outfielder rather than a true center fielder. 26, we have the Chicago White Sox, Noah Schultz from Oswego East High School in Illinois. Um, losing Rodon was a big thing for them. And Rodon, excuse me. And I'm looking at the Chicago White Sox as a team that have to make sure that they're, you know, keeping up with the lefties in that rotation. Um, you know, they got a lot of right-handers in this within this organization. However, I think they got to make sure that they're adding another left-hander. Uh, Noah Schultz is an interesting projectable a uh, lower end starter when it comes to the major league level. Nevertheless, at pick 26, you're finding some value in another left-handed pitcher uh, for this team. 27 here, we have the Milwaukee Brewers, Jet Williams from Walkwall uh, Heath High School in Texas. The guy is built like an absolute truck. And I think from a hitting perspective, he offers some interesting projectable upside. And with the Milwaukee Brewers, they're kind of looking at this from the scope of we're just going to take this guy and see where we can get him to fit. I'm not exactly sure if he'll stick at the shortstop or they'll move him to third or second. However, this is one of those guys you want to just take and see if you can make him fit and work. So I love this for the Brewers, not being afraid of, you know, overall, I think they're getting really good value here with Jet Williams here, here at 27. Uh, now with the Astros, Brock Jones from Stanford, an advanced hitter that can hit to all parts of the field. And the Houston Astros have done a really nice job post Carlos Correa with building this roster, how it needs to be built. 
Uh, but I think in the outfield, they can continue to add stuff within this minor league system. Uh, Brock Jones from Stanford is going to be a really, really good player, um, especially right now. He's one of the more advanced hitters as it currently stands. So uh, it's pretty impressive what he's put together at his career at Stanford. And now uh, going to Houston is a big deal. 29. Uh, this is very much a Tampa Bay Rays selection. Left-handed pitcher Carson Wisenhunt from East Carolina. And I'm kind of looking at this from the perspective of the Tampa Bay Rays are going to continue to get pitching, pitching, pitching. And that's just always what they do. And I think this is going to be once again, the latest rendition in doing so um, they have a lot of, a lot of right-handers in this organization. I think adding another left-hander would not hurt at all. So uh, for the Tampa Bay Rays, this is huge. Uh, adding a guy like Wizen Hunt into this, you know, potentially into this rotation eventually, or just having him as a really, really good, uh, you know, bullpen arm, which is something that they're able to do with converting a lot of these starters into bullpen guys. And then finally, uh, Kay, Kay Dowdy from LSU, another LSU product goes off the board, the third baseman. Um, I think he's probably going to stick at that hot corner. And if you look at the San Francisco Giants, I think it's kind of an interesting pick here. Uh, you, you find a guy that's going to be a good hitter at the next level, plays pretty good defense. And overall, the Giants are doing what they're doing. Uh, drafting a consistent prospect, uh, a proven bat at that at that collegiate level. So Cade Doughty is the selection. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Also, leave a like on today's video if you did enjoy the content. We're going to be producing more and more MLB mocks. So let me know in the comment section below if there's some other guys that I should definitely be looking at for this upcoming draft. Thanks for stopping by, and we will catch you in the next video.